The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Good morning, Bright Circle! It's your handy dandy pirate radio, Skullfield 89.17, here with your lovely hostess, Moon Thunderdark. It has officially been 14 hours since the forces of hell accumulated by the lovely princess of hell have fought back the swarm of harpies. I mean, angels from exterminating us. What is her secret? What was the weapon used against them? Well, that doesn't seem to matter just over 12 hours after the extermination was prevented. Stocks are up for Carmilla Carmine Weapons Incorporated and the V Corporation is recovering from the massive stock hit after the blackout. Finally, we have confirmation that Alistair the Radio Demon is no longer able to suppress our radio waves from spreading past the neutral zone around the Angel Embassy. So hello to all the new listeners! Huh. She certainly has more energy than you, huh? Commented Husk as he glared at Alistair, who stood stone-faced next to the radio, blaring whatever crap you were spouting. In other news, the death of Sir Benches has now 100% been confirmed, leaving the little territory he did have up for grabs. I've heard a certain bombastic gang boss is already on her way to lay claim to it. You better be quick, and you better be blast resistant, because this will turn ugly soon! Charlie, my dear, you... Can you please turn that off? Oh, Alistair, you know that's not how we do this here. The Princess of Hell clapped her hands. Let's all democratically decide. The vote ended with him losing. Obviously. Which caused the entire room to darken for only a moment. Which made him realize, sure, he might have been severely nerfed, but this was still his domain. If anything, you now spreading your auditorial dung all around hell meant that he had much easier time tracking your true location. There's just no class to it. No art. No style. Well, I think she's doing a fine job, chuckled Angel Dust. You're just jealous. More people are listening to her now. Alistair's left eye twitched subtly. Lastly, to end this round of morning news, the weather report. Dust and heat as always, and now let's skip over to a little music. The first few notes played, filling Alistair with disgust. It was this techno crap shit. Oh yeah, that's my jam, baby! I can fuck to this! shouted Angel Dust. Alistair scoffed. He too could throw some garbage computer noise together and call it music. Teleporting into his own radio studio atop the hotel's roof. Scowling, upset at your success. He began scanning the radio waves. With his staff broken, which had contained a large chunk of his power, he needed to put actual effort into it. The staff had functioned like a battery charging with his residual energies whenever he wasn't using them. This allowed him powerful bursts of energy, and he had grown dependent on it, as it allowed him to do feats he technically wasn't able to pull off, such as his bestial demon form, something overlords could maintain maybe for five minutes at best, with a staff, he could use it seemingly indefinitely, simply because he had charged it for that long. And so, up until now, he had a quasi-monopoly of a radio on the circle. It was either his show or someone borrowing the airwaves, giving him power in exchange for the service, but... Now... Countless pirate radios were popping up, and yours... Yours was the most successful... If he could control you, the others would fold no matter what, and he would stop your nonsense, ear-bleeding crap. His eyes flickered with static. 
There was interference from all the other pirate radios plopping up. But as he twisted the dials on his studio and released his twisted energy into the flow of noise, he discovered a constant. It was faint. He found himself swimming through an ocean of TV static, with one shape somehow being visible. Alistair pushed forward, a path through the buzz, until he stretched out his hand from the glitching liquid, taking hold of the shape, and then everything was sucked into him like he was the hole in a faucet. The world around him became a hole again, and he was somewhere else now, targeted teleportation. He stood in front of a rather unassuming building. The only indicator that anything strange was going on here was the slightly bigger than a normal radio antenna on the construction's roof. It even had red lights blinking at its peak. Alistair scoffed. Even though technically this was the bare minimum, this was disgustingly simple. How dare you rival him? With his hands folded behind his back, he stepped into the building front door unlocked. This was a crappy slum after all. It was safer to leave the door open and show any intruders that, in fact, there was nothing to grab, so just leave. <laughs> Which was interesting to the radio demon. It looked terrible inside, broken floors, trash and debris practically everywhere, but he could sense no present around him. The entire first and second floor were entirely empty, devoid of any life. The pipes creaked, the wood ached. It would have been scary for a mortal soul, but not Alistair. For him this was nothing. But it was as he ascended to the third floor when things changed. It wasn't clean by any means, but tidy. Even the graffiti that had been plastering the walls everywhere was absent here. Alistair tapped his right cheek and thought. He was almost curious to explore the other rooms here, but no, he had a goal. It was the fourth floor that was drastically different. And he could feel it. The static, the waves, the power of the radio. His gaze shifted. There were doors leading into empty apartments, but one was different. It was red. A metal door. With anticipation and a smug grin, he approached it. His hand stretching out, he placed it on the handle. Using his powers, he clicked open the lock. A trivial task for an overlord. Pushing down slowly, Alistair first peeked inside. It was a very clean environment, all by quite dark. Opposite to him was a mixed desk with a person sitting at it. So this was you, Moon Thunderdark. But something was off. Alistair's eyes narrowed. You had noticed him. How? He watched as the silhouette unplugged her microphone to ensure it remained muted. As long as the desk would remain intact, it would now keep playing music. It now played more of your stupid techno babble. Alistair's eyes narrowed, and the woman sighed, standing up dramatically. A microphone staff appearing in her hand. Alistair's eyes widened with horror as well as amusement. 
Alistair, my old man, it's been truly a while. Quickly you made a twirl, bowing deeply before the radio demon. With a mix of anger and amusement, he walked into your room. Stella! <laughs> I should have known. He hissed. I should have known you survived those seven years of my absence. The lights suddenly turned on after you snapped your fingers. In front of Alistair stood what by all means and purposes would easily be described as a gender-bent version of him. Shoulder long scarlet red hair, antler stubs that just barely penetrated and separated her bangs, rounded out with two red deer ears that stuck out at the top. A white smile of sharp, slightly yellowish teeth, and a beautiful hourglass figure. Of course. Despite your visual similarities, you were your own person and not blood related to Alistair at all. You were a phylactery demon. Phylactery demons were shapeshifters with a unique ability. They were humans born with a so called blank soul, meaning not much of a personality in life or death. Overlords used phylactery demons to store power within them, similar to Alistair's staff, just with the ability to think and move about on their own, as well as having the power of subcoming. Or in other words, if Alistair was to die, he would simply reawaken in your body. Weakened, of course, but not permanently dead. Come to think of it, Maybe I should have sought you out the moment he had decided to come out of retirement. Mockingly, you tilted your head. Your curiosity has finally brought you to me. How wonderful! Well, my darling, I must say you did set up quite the bait. Playing that waffle and foregoing any sort of art in your show. Almost as if you specifically designed to make me want to kill you. If anything, I'm embarrassed that I didn't think this was you. You crossed your arms looking at your red, slightly glowing claws casually. Your price is as empty as your heart, Alistair, but I will accept it for the time being. So, Stella, darling, will you now sh shut that crap off? You leaned to the side and made the studio audio louder. I see, darling. He hissed through his teeth. Alistair made a pulling motion with his hand and you could in fact feel it. You almost lost your balance, but... The pull wasn't strong enough to make you move from your spot. Alistair's eyes widened. While you gave him a questioning look. No tentacles. There was no furniture of being thrown. Not even laser beams were exchanged. He didn't even transform. Alistair's smile almost faltered as he looked at his left hand. Bewildered. He was disgusted by his own weakness. Tommy Alistair. You suddenly whispered into his ear as you had teleported behind him. Your hands on his shoulders, squeezing tightly. How does it feel having a phylactery that's more powerful than you? A wave of sickness was embracing him, similar to altitude sickness. Hmm, maybe I take on the moniker's radio demon. I'm much more charming than you anyways. He growled, turning, both hands taking hold of your throat. You grunted. His grip was tight, filled with murderous intent. How 
dare you, you little whore? He laughed. <laughs> Do you even know what I'm capable of? Your grin, however, didn't vanish. You looked down at him, and he could feel it. He was so angry. He was the one to first lose his cool. Even if he killed you and took back his remaining power from you, it would be a hollow victory because you managed to get under his skin. His grip tightened. A twitch of desperation beneath his right eye. The worst thing? He wasn't feeling the rush of the kill. The rush of hurting someone. Because he felt cornered. Borderline afraid. It was when the bones of your neck creaked. When you decided that's enough. Your right hand glowed green and you placed it on his chest. And after an intense moment of nothing, he flew backwards with the force akin to being hit by a car. Flying right over your radio desk, slamming into the wall. Leaving behind an alistair shaped dent as he slid to the ground. He exhaled painfully while you rubbed your damaged neck. Alistair, my dear friend. You growled through your throat. I don't even want this fight. Approaching him, you pointed your staff at him. I just... It's been seven years. Seven years of having no contact with my sire. I wanted to see you. Really bad. There was humiliation in the radio static of your voice. I don't even care you're pathetic now. You tilted your head. If anything, that makes me want you more. You stood above him. He looked up at you, breathing heavily, his knee ears pressed tightly against his scalp. You bowed down to him, your hands on his shoulders, rubbing them again. I'm your phylactery, Alistair. All I want is your attention. All I need is your attention. And be taken care of by you. After all, I gave up my real self to you. Remember? That means a lot. Now was mockering your tone and yet it was the truth. Your mind, body and very soul were connected to him on a deep personal level thanks to you being his phylactery. <laughs> so what now, darling? We exchange some fluids. And then what? You leave? Well, I might would have done that if you weren't such a... worm right now. You grinned, he grinned, both of you attempting to predict the next move of the other. You both of you knew that this were two predators hungrily staring at each other. Alistair already despite the exchange of physicality, now being forced to do it with what essentially was him with boobs was making it worse. I will of course keep doing my radio show. See it as motivation, my dear. You purred as you cupped his chin with your hand, forcing him to look right into your eyes. And then you press your lips against his. Aggressively, you shoved your tongue into his mouth. But as he tried to bite down, you grabbed his antlers with your right hand, pulling at them harshly. 
they were directly connected to his scalp, his weak spot. This caused him immense pain, and reluctantly, he pulled his teeth back. His will was almost broken. You forced your tongue to rub against his. It had a very faint, sweet taste. Knowing his propensity for enjoying a good Earl Grey with caramel cookies, there was a chance this was the reason. After intertwining your long, slender organs for a few minutes, slimy, rubbing, feeling the heat of each other, you pull away. Tongue lolled out of your mouth. You snickered. Well, if you're done, darling, I shall take my leap. You pressed a finger on a salvia wet lips. Uh, uh, uh. We are done when I say we're done. Standing up, you began unbuttoning your red suit. You better get ready, Alistair, old friend. After all, you have seven years to make up to me. Uh, I'm going to write you like we're going to repopulate the planet. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts. Husky HD 17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.